All right, this is a video reply to, uh, I don't know, the first two-thirds of uh, Semesio Logistics. Uh, can I just call you Semesio? Semesio Logistics. Semesio Logistics. Semesio. Semesio Logistics. Semesio Logistics. Sema. Um... Uh, I'm walking home because we sold, uh, I'm thinking of moving, we decided to sell my wife's car. I only work a mile from where I live, so I've been walking, so. I'm walking home, I figured I uh, will go through a little bit of your video here. So, hey, first of all, you express uh, some <clears throat> confusion as to what I'm fed up with. I seem to be fed up perhaps to the point of intolerance, and yet I'm still watching their videos. Well, I started watching Thunderfoot's videos again when he's become, it's not like he makes them often, when he started becoming an anti-feminist and dumps atheism mostly as a topic. Because I think it's total bullshit what he's saying. And, and I don't understand where he's coming from. I have a confusion and what I seek here is to uh, find out how could somebody believe that shit. You know, like, not only can I not get what, uh, what Thunderfoot is thinking in terms of, you know, what he exposited on, but I don't know how he doesn't think that that's rape apology yet. You know, I would easily, more easily understand if he understood it was rape apology and he just said, yeah, because rape's a part of life and it's part of nature. Yeah, it's a rape apology. I bet that I wouldn't quite get either. So I'm trying to, to explain this stuff, you know, and the fed up part, well, I don't really enjoy Thunderfoot's videos in general. And lately, you know, it's kind of like I get, I'm not sub to him, but I hear about his videos. So I think I've seen uh, his videos. Usually somebody else has re responded to them. But also I'm kind of watching him now too. And as far as integral math, I've been very clear. I, I enjoy watching his videos. Uh, uh, fed up. If I was fed up in the sense you're asking about, yeah, I wouldn't watch them. But that never happens. I don't get fed up in that way. I get bored. If I get bored of watching somebody enough, then I'll stop watching. But, you know, if I'm not bored watching, you might still be a boring person or whatever. It's just I've found something of interest to me. Maybe I'm looking into your personality type or the subject that you're opining on is of importance to me or relevant or of interest or maybe I'm trying not to be bored and I'm just killing time you never never know but I have not said I was fed up with those people I'm fed up with the the arguments a little bit but still I don't think fed up means what you think it means then because I'm not gonna stop when I'm fed up so if fed up means I've had enough I'm not gonna put up that's no 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 I can handle a lot more conversation on these topics. I just think it should be put another way. I think it is ridiculously stupid the things I'm having to argue with in this particular case. Right? It's ridiculously stupid. You can use uh, metaphors and whatnot uh, if, you, if you'd like. But when you start saying well, not just because a group did something good doesn't mean they're good, for example, Nazis. Well, okay, I thought it would be more reasonable to be in a world where feminists are political activists, and we know that women did need to get rights like the vote. We all agree. So they're not really that much like Nazis. Not similar enough to go, well, maybe they're wrong. Nazis were wrong, but they made the VW and they were still wrong. And so I'm fed up with that bullshit. I'm fed up here in the same argument. And uh, it doesn't mean what you think fed up means. Like, I'm going to stop. No, I'm fed up, so I'm going to fucking do, say something about it. I talk a lot in this video. By the way, you just have to take the emotional thing. I'm glad you're talking on this subject. But the subject has emotional uh, weight to me as well. So I'm going to call it like I see it. Hopefully you can take that. We talk a lot about convincing people. And it's like, uh, I just want to shine light on this stuff. If you're willing to stand over there 
in that light. Fine, I think people have emotional, I think the brain justifies emotional uh, decisions, emotional attitudes that just come from the emotions. And uh, the brain mostly justifies those. And the way I use that to my benefit is then I go ahead and do that justification, then I analyze it with tools I know of what's logical, what, what are common fallacies and whatnot. And if the intellectual argument doesn't cut the muster, well, then I go back to the emotions and I try to adjust how I feel about something. You know? I lose a girl to some other guy and I go, this is terrible, this is he's evil, and blah, blah, blah. Then I justify all my feelings and I go, well, that actually looks like I'm, it makes me look more like I'm bitter. And I go back and adjust my feelings. Try to be more realistic. I'm not trying to convince others. I find it difficult enough to convince myself. I'm pretty picky. So I am willing to shine a light on myself since that's only fair since I shine a light on you guys. Um, you're like, uh, see, this is a perfect example. Why? I talked about maternity leave, and you asked, why ascribe that to feminism? Well, it, it, don't if you don't want to. I do, and I think it's fairly obvious, and you go on and later at the same thing with the sensitivity. I think feminists are the ones in America that said it's okay to cry, and we like Alan Alda, he's manly, and I think that was feminists and liberals, and feminist sympathizers, and feminism. I don't know of any manly man movement or men's rights movement that has so far uh, pushed that idea forward in the public consciousness. But that doesn't convince me. Well, even if you believed me that they did that, I don't know that that would mean that you like feminists. I don't even know if you think men should be able to cry without shame. Uh, presumably, though, because <laughs> feminists change the world, and that's one of the ways they've seen change. Oh, and then you go, oh, but not the whole world, not the whole world. I don't know what you're going on, on, on about that. I'm talking about me, I'm talking about an attitude, I'm talking about something that I think is fairly straightforward, something feminists have pushed for and accomplished uh, that I want. Same with paternity leave. And remember, we're comparing men's rights activism to feminism. Right, so yeah, there's other factors and other causes involved in paternity leave, and there was informal paternity leave going back centuries. He had a nice boss and we're the kind of guy that wanted it. So, yeah, now, something I should have said up front, I've said it over and over, and people just don't get it, which I think y'all live in, in a big fantasy world, which I live in too, but I think I know how to leave and, you know, jack into reality every once in a while. But when I'm talking about feminists and imagining what feminists think, I am going back to my own activist experiences. For example, when I was out there protesting the Iraq war before we invaded Iraq, when all these other motherfucking idiots were for it, put up your hands if you were one of the idiots that was for it before. Somehow, when we say who's, who's for it, it's less people than were for it. Yeah, interesting. Anyway, feminists are there. Feminists always mobilize. If you're out there uh, 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 protesting a treatment, labor issue, they were there. General civil rights movement, uh, for example, in the 70s, the huge, I think still the biggest protest, civil rights protest ever. San Francisco, feminists, crucial in organizing it. And getting out people on the ground, going out. So, you know, when I was protesting apartheid, when I was trying to protect people's park, when I was always feminist there. And never, never once did they hate me for being a man. And I know when the MRA position is, all oh, they care about is women, right? That's all they ever talk about. Their one trick ponies don't care about humans. It's like, well, I've been out there caring about humans, and I've never seen any men's rights activists. Maybe it's just because it's a young movement. But that's the thing. I think men's rights activists all they do is go, look at this bitchy feminist taking out of the power. And it's like, well, there's some issues. And some people, Aaron Pizzi, there's certain people, and when they are actually boots on the ground doing something 
about the human rights of men, then I, I respect that, and I like that, and I support that, right? But they're just talking a lot of bullshit. Eh, I don't support that. They're just talking shit about feminists. It's like, okay, look, men's rights activist. There, you have some rights to deal with. One, uh, workplace death. You'll find that's actually a labor issue. Workplace death, a lot higher for men. That's the way to get into actual labor issue. Watch out how you'll be called a uh, communist when you try to improve men's situation. Disproportionate and, and a long history of disproportionate uh, suicides among men. Of course, oddly, both sexes quote unquote attempt suicide at the same rate. But men are either just better at it or really meant it more or something, more men. So that is an issue. Falling math and science scores for boys. Well, that's a problem. Okay. But we see video after video about how, what's the matter, ladies? We're just saying a short skirt makes somebody want to rape you more. Come on, ladies. Don't blame the earthquake for the thing that fell over. Blame the guy that didn't make it stronger. And you're that guy, ladies. Boom. Chastity belts. But Hitler. But Hitler. Ah, oh, some bad luck in town at the moment. I really respect those people. <coughs> Rescue guys and gals. So I think that, that the men's rights activists are, are on a failed approach. They, they are setting them, they are acting mostly just as reactionaries to feminists. And at that point, people that don't go out on the street don't know what the activist communities are like when... You know, see, most of the feminists I've known in my life are the bulk number of people, as people I've met in person and talked to. <coughs> you guys... You think of feminists, it's like, well, for example, Rebecca Watson, what the fuck has she ever done? Gone and partied and made a blog? <laughs> Congratulations. There's groups out there that actually get laws and lobby uh, uh, candidates and throw debates and help people be civically informed. And you're talking about your bunch of bloggers in your virtual world. Well, the feminists in Call of Duty seem very, very anti-male. Maybe that's not the real world, okay? I'm sure as hell not gonna change what I think millions of feminists are actually like and actually think, and if they secretly really hate their husband uh, because of a bunch of fucking Generation Z bloggers. Fuck you losers, you know shit all. Go out and fucking try to get something done. Go fight for those men's rights. You will run into feminists and they'll be there helping you go, yeah, exactly, less workplace deaths, men, boom, disproportionate, not fair. You won't have any trouble finding feminists like that. Oh, well, you might because you'd be looking for feminists that hate men. And they write, you know, academics that write controversial books and, and bloggers that said terrible things. And they're so closed-minded when they don't want to blame the woman for rape. Don't you guys know there's more than one cause? Yeah, there's more than one cause. They all go through the rapist. He was beat. He was drunk. He was, it's all through the rapist. I don't know if I'll have time, but basically we have a little philosophical issue here of, uh, of the understanding of causality and so-called passive causes that sound like causes grammatically, but they aren't really causes. Like in an earthquake, a bookcase falls over and kills somebody. What killed the guy? Oh, a bookcase. Okay, what killed the guy? Why did the bookcase do that? Well, an earthquake pushed the bookcase over. Okay, so what killed the guy? Was it the earthquake or was it the fact that the uh, bookcase was not secured to the wall like you're supposed to do in an earthquake area? The earthquake killed him. That preventative measure is, is not... Lack of a preventative measure is not a cause, even though... In the English language, you can plug it into the same Lego spots as a real cause. 
to understand this, you, you have to understand causality, the logic of causality, just a little bit better, I think. So, you, uh, you did talk a lot about convincing, and I really am just trying to shed light. You see, I don't feel that, I think, Thunderford's a good example. He is so far gone in this attitude. He, he actually, I know from his past videos, like, he's trying to attack an easy target that he thinks should have less power or even less power like creationists. Now, somehow he's thought, well, what will I do next? I'm bored of creationists, and he's chosen feminists. I don't think there is any chance that his brain is going to work well enough to hold the ideas I have on politics and culture. I seek only to shine light on where it is he is standing. Yeah, if, if you're not going to accept my point that feminism is giving men the permission to be sensitive as a, as a cultural force, then you just don't want to, dude. You know what I'm talking about. You could disagree and say, I don't think they really have. But you're like, I don't know. Why do you even say? Sorry, you know why. Because it's obvious. It's an obvious point. And you mentioned the diversity of humanism. Yeah, feminism is a part of humanism. It's not, it's not Nazism, dude. Nazism isn't a part of humanism. So when I say, hey, all humanists come together, uh, yeah, I wasn't talking about Nazis because I don't consider them humanists, you see. Humanism is diverse. And furthermore, if you want to improve the conditions in a coal mine, you can't just go there and say, yay, for humans. You gotta go, I'm an advocate for coal miner rights. Now, humanists show up, but when the humanists show up, they go, I am advocating for coal miner rights. This is ridiculous. Why? Yeah, humanism. So what you have in humanism is a natural diversity where you got to zero in on the problem, right? You got to microscope down to, to the particular problem, the particular violation of a human right. You don't just then go, because human rights. Well, why can't a guy that has agreed to work 12 hours and, you know, 1% of them die a year, why can't they make that free choice? Human rights. No, you're going to have to get specific. Well, because of this and this and no slavery and they had no choice and what's going on. So feminism is one of the areas of humanism. And they're definitely, most of them, again, biased by people that are actually out there fighting for humanist causes like stopping war and poverty. The feminists are always present. And the men's rights activists, never. Never yet. So get started on that. Well, let's see. What are my other notes here? I'm not going to go through them, I guess. Uh, oh, you said I didn't ex do any exposition on what the, M the MRAs propose. I don't think they do propose anything. They're just setting themselves up as reactionaries to feminists. That's the problem. That's what I said. I think they're just, I hate you, feminists. I hate you, feminists. But I've seen feminists accomplish things and do things outside of feminism as well as within feminism. And I find it ironic that within feminism, uh, there are benefits to me as a man. Some of the things the men's rights movement should be covering, so far only feminists have dealt with it. Men's rights activists should be inspired by what feminists did, and I think it's uh, of concern, it ought to be of concern to the men's rights activists that they're not inspired by what feminism has done, uh, but are reactionaries against it. You're talking to me about, well, what would an MRA think if they saw that? Well, I don't know, they might think that I'm shedding light on the fact that I'm not buying their bullshit uh, uh, plea that humanism is what really concerns them. Just focus on the rights of men that you want to increase, right? That, that's the only thing. And if you keep saying that, uh, you know, I said if, if they're really humanists, they should say, come on in, because what feminists are humanists as well, um, by and large and historically and judging by their accomplishments and by their role in progressive politics, um, that I'm not, it's not really a, a sane analogy to say that I'm, it's as if I'm inviting Genghis Khan and Adolf Hitler in. Men, if men's rights activists were really humanists, then they would welcome and work with Nazis and, Mo and Mongol hordes from the past. That's just like saying they would welcome people that work for women's rights. It's the same thing. Feminism is a lot like a Mongol horde or a Nazi. I don't think so, dude.
you were talking about the humanism being not all inclusive, right? But feminism is obviously a part of it. Um, by the way, I, I'm often just there's so much hypocrisy. It's like the men's rights act movement. Why isn't it just called the human rights HRA? Why? Well, because you're trying to care for the fact that there's some areas where men have fallen by in an equal right, and they're being ignored, and the little boys are being ignored, and right. So that can make a part of humanism where you're drilling down. MRA is trying to drill down, right? But no, instead it bitches at the word feminine being in feminism and then trying to push this metaphor that that means they're only for women. But you then go around with men's rights activism or humans and men's and it's hypocritical. Feminism is propagating humanism and it's just doing that from a focus on, on the woman angle just like... Uh, you know, labor is forwarding a humanist principles from the labor angle. And there's historic arguments between the communists, the feminists, and labor within the progressive faction. And um, what pisses, and I don't mind that, I think there's plenty of things to criticize feminism in, uh, in the specifics, in the narrow, you know, strategies and stuff. But, um, what I hate is when those other groups start using the right-wing feminazi memes, which is basically what uh, Thunderfoot and uh, Integral Math are, are doing. So I agree that the only cause of the rape is the rapist. The fact that you think that's uncompromising is ridiculous. And then that you go on and say, why do you think there's only one cause? Well, there's not one cause. It could be that the rapist was drunk or the, the bad ethics or... But it's all through the rapist. That doesn't mean there's just one cause. Nice try. Especially when you're talking about, we're arguing about whether how a woman dresses is one of the causes. Is that like securing your bookshelf to the wall? Every woman must wear a chastity belt in case an earthquake happens and they fall and a man will kill him with a rape accusation. Yeah, it's not hard to understand multiple causes. That's not one of the problems. Hope I can help you. I do focus on agency and immediacy, and if you want to ignore that, well then, I guess let's not talk about crime at all. Um, so, I hope you understand by now, when you talk about feminists, what you see versus me. I'm talking about progressive activists that are out there protesting apartheid, protesting the war, trying to get some law or measure passed, uh, petition tables. They, or for that matter, very uh, conventional stuff, like if you go support a local candidate, if it's a Democrat, there's going to be feminists there and feminist organizations throwing the debates and, give, and, and, the and providing the volunteers that show up to have meet and greets and everything else. So I see something different when you're going, well, let me see, let me read some feminist blogs to see what's going on in Call of Duty land. Oh, my God. That's what feminism is. So, oh, another little hypocritical thing is it's like, I'm saying that men's rights activists are just going, fuck them, fuck them, fuck them, to, fe to feminists and bloggers and stuff that they find. And you're saying, well, that's what I see feminists doing. But no, because as you also see the law as being favoring feminists. That's the feminists having achieved something in the law. So they must be doing more than talk. Right? That's the real complaint. If they're just talking, it wouldn't matter. But evidently, they're, it's a matriarchy, and you can tell by all the powerful roles on Earth now dominated by women. You say something like the one in five is ripped. So ludicrous, just ludicrous. Well, no, it's not ludicrous because maybe it's not that high. Maybe it's one in 20. What's ludicrous is that you want to talk about that when we have tens of thousands of rapes a year and people like Thunderfoot saying, there's nothing to do about that. It's just sexual preference, man. This just can't solve rapes. And you're saying, well, this, this particular statistic, though, is stupid. No, what's not stupid is there's obviously too many rapes and there's people ostensibly in the mainstream that still say, hey, there's nothing you can do about it. It's like trying to cure homosexuality. So absurd. Yeah, if that one-fifth number is so absurd, well, let me tell you, it's not a tenth as absurd as the rate of rape in the U.S. Okay. 
So if we want, we could have a dedicated video on uh, the concept of cause versus contributing uh, factors and the role and grammar of active versus passive verbs, if you want. So um, straw man in here that there's only one cause of rape. I'm simple-minded because the rapist is the cause of rape and he's just one thing. Uh, that's a straw man. And also just the idea that feminists hate men and won't work on other issues. Just factually not true, which I know through my own experience and through referencing history. Cheers.